1989, Miami. The humid air hangs heavy as a large man wearing a pig mask approaches the home. He storms the front door, knocking over the man leaning against it. Before the man can react, his head is smashed by the boot of the pig butcher. The butcher picks up a hammer and walks into the next room, where a man charges him with a baseball bat, but he is smashed out of the way while another man futilely tries to escape through a back door. He is also beaten to death. A nearby phone rings, and the butcher answers to hear his desire is upstairs. He climbs the stairs and uses a nearby shotgun to kill an unsuspecting man close by. He opens a nearby door where a nearly naked man charges and punches him several times in the gut. The pig butcher is unfazed by the blows, and the man backs away in fear until he too is killed by the butcher. Nearby is a beautiful woman with flowing blonde hair. The butcher knocks her to the ground, mounts her, and... Oh wait, this isn't a mass maniac killing from 1989? Only a movie? Oh, okay. So that means everything we just saw must be fiction, right? Well, let's take a look at Martin Brown's story and try to determine what's dream and reality. So the sequence just featured is a scene out of a movie titled Midnight Animal, which dramatizes the mass maniac killings from 1989. The movie has sparked some controversy in the papers due to the source of its subject matter, and the studio responsible for creating the film has received heavy criticism. However, production for the movie has continued and the film features callbacks to the 1989 murders, like the mass assailant and the phone calls. The masked assailant, named the Pig Butcher in the intro, is played by actor Martin Brown, who was, we'll say, interested in the role since it's different from his typical castings. And even though the movie and Martin himself have received criticism, he still goes for interviews to promote the film. Filming on Midnight Animal continues, and one day, while filming the attack on the police station, tragedy strikes. The script originally called for the Butcher to fight his way to the interrogation room where the girl is being interviewed, and upon entering the room, the butcher was to force the girl to the ground and seemingly sexually assault her. However, during filming, when the butcher enters the room, the girl grabs a nearby gun and shoots the butcher. She stands over the fallen butcher, screams she's not his girlfriend, and fires several more rounds into the butcher, finishing with a round to the head. The director yells cut, and satisfied with the shots he got by changing the script, says there won't be any need for retakes. He congratulates the actors and suggests they go get something to eat while they set up the next shot. However, Martin doesn't move. As he lies bleeding on the ground, it becomes clear that there was a prop mistake, and Martin was shot with live rounds. Shortly afterwards, Martin succumbs to the wounds he sustained on set. And that is the story of Martin Brown, a renowned actor that tragically died due to an onset accident. It's a sad story, and one that would end here if it weren't for some strange things that happened during his sequences. Unlike everybody else in the game, Martin Brown doesn't interact with any of the other characters, which wouldn't be a big deal on its own, but his levels aren't dated either. They seemingly stand on their own, independent of the rest of the cast, which calls into question the reality of his sequences. Midnight Animal is a real movie, and the controversy surrounding it is being covered by the Miami Papers, which is read by the other characters. However, Martin himself isn't mentioned in the article. But there is an interview about Martin's role in Midnight Animal that airs on December 28th, seemingly grounding Martin's involvement with the project in reality. However, the broadcast on December 28th is interrupted before the guest is named, detaching the interviews from each other and by consequence, the real world. We do get to see the interview from Martin's side, and during the interview, he explains to the host that he chose to become the pig butcher because he's always had a sadistic desire to harm people and watch them die in agony. The host becomes nervous and expresses discomfort, which angers Martin. However, her reactions lead Martin to believe he's in a dream. A man from the crowd stands and puts on a rooster mask. There's a flash of white and the entire room changes. Martin is now bloody and wearing the pig mask. The host has had her head severed and is now displayed where the pig mask was moments ago. The man in the mask now stands alone in the audience. Since Martin thinks this is a dream, the man suggests he wakes up. He then asks Martin if he knows how Midnight Animal ends. Martin answers with silence. The man in the mask says there's a twist at the end and warns that no one's gonna like it. 
then suggests that Martin get out while he has a chance. Martin considers the man's warning, but since he enjoys the thrill he gets from being the pig butcher, ignores the man's recommendation. The man then simply asks, you really enjoy hurting other people, don't you? Martin tries to explain away his sadistic thrills, saying it's just a movie, but the man in the mask and the player know the truth. The scene is bookended by static, indicating this sequence was indeed a dream. Now this is where details get murky. We can take this to mean that the actor Martin Brown had violent desires, and acting as the pig butcher gave him an outlet for these sadistic tendencies, like the game shows. However, given that Martin Brown is never mentioned as being an actor in the Midnight Animal Project outside of Martin's levels, we can recontextualize these levels in a different way. Martin Brown may not be the name of an actor working on the movie, but instead the name of a man that, like the fans, has seen Jacket Slaughter of the Russian Mafia as inspiring. However, unlike the fans, whose crusade more or less lines up with Jackets, Martin's view of Jacket Slaughter is warped by things in the media and pop culture, such as the Midnight Animal movie, which portrayed Jacket as an insane man that kidnapped a woman and murdered with no remorse. Martin Brown adopts the pig butcher persona and goes about replicating Jacket's quote, murders, but unlike the fans, loses his mind in the process. He sees himself as a famous actor, modeled after the real actor that portrayed the pig butcher, acting in a movie. He believes he isn't murdering real people, but other actors on set, and isn't kidnapping a real woman, just an actress playing a damsel in distress. He also hallucinates events to fit the narrative in his head, such as living in Jacket's former apartment, being featured in interviews about its role in the film, and even in an attack on a police station. Ultimately, his hallucinations come to an end when his kidnapped victim kills him in self-defense. Whether an actor that tragically met his end, or a crazed man that tried to replicate Jacket's quote, murders, one thing is clear. Martin harbors violent fantasies, but attempts to detach himself from his sadistic desires by explaining that his actions aren't real, that he's just playing a character that loves violence, and he's not really getting any pleasure from it. It's a feeling we, the players, should be familiar with. After all, we're just playing characters in this game. We don't really enjoy all this violence, do we? But that's the story of Martin Brown. If you have any questions, feel free to ask and I'll do my best to answer them. But until next time, thank you for watching and see you later. In 1989, numerous people went around attacking the Russian Mafia and animal masks. Included among these maniacs is a man that wore a rat mask.